CW, SSB, FM and AM, the different forms of modulation are just that, modulation. In amateur radio, single sideband, or SSB, is used in HF communication due to the fact that it takes up less bandwidth than amplitude modulation. It's roughly 3 kHz versus 6 kHz for those interested. Continuous wave, or Morse code, takes even less bandwidth than SSB, about 150 Hz versus 3 kHz. Frequency modulation takes more bandwidth than AM, running a hefty average of about 5 kHz to 15 kHz versus AM's meagre 6 kHz. So therein lies the question, why does the aviation world use AM? AM, as we detailed before, uses less bandwidth than FM, meaning more frequencies are available. FM has one fatal flaw in its demodulation, the capture effect. In FM demodulation, the receiver tracks the modulated frequency shift of the desired carrier while discriminating against any other signal since it can only follow the deviation of one signal at a time. AM does not. In AM, the receiver tracks the signal strength of the AM signal as the basis for demodulation. This allows any other signal to be tracked as just another change in amplitude. So it is possible for an AM receiver to demodulate several carriers at the same time, resulting in an audio mix of both signals. If the signals are close, but not exactly on the same frequency, that mix will not only include the audio from both carriers, but depending on the carrier separation, an audible tone, or a beat signal may be heard at a frequency equal to the difference in the carrier's frequencies involved. For instance, if one carrier is at 1 MHz and the other is at 1.15 MHz, then a 0.15 MHz beat frequency tone will be heard. It is possible to hear two stations transmitting on the same frequency on AM. On FM, if they are approximately equal in strength, neither will be heard, just a buzzing heterodyne. AM radios are simpler and less expensive to build than FM radios. This is due to the fact that in an FM system, transmitter and receiver are more complex, as variation of the modulating signal has to be converted and detected from corresponding variation in frequencies, i.e voltage and frequency and frequency to voltage conversion has to be done. With so many aircraft, think about how troublesome it would be to change to FM radios. When railroads changed radio systems from NRN, that's the National Rail Network, it took years to do. That is with only a few thousand radio units for each railroad at most. Right now, they're transitioning from FM to digital. It was estimated to take about 10 to 15 years again, with only a few thousand units at most. Compare that to millions of radios for aviation, multiplied by two, as every aircraft has two comm radios. Both are AM, both would need to be replaced. Ground stations would need to monitor two sets of frequencies, instead of just one. One set on AM, one set on FM. At the end of the transition period, which would take years, there would no longer be AM radios in aviation. Thusly, it would also be necessary to allocate more frequency space for the aviation band due to the wider bandwidth of FM transmitters. So, I hope you now know the difference between AM and FM and why we use it in aviation. If you learned something or enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And if you have any further ideas for an interesting video, please leave them in the comments below. Thank you for watching.